You know, some of the most exciting farming and environment ideas coming out of Ireland today are being funded by the European Innovation Fund. Things like the Bride Project in Cork and the Blackstairs Farming Project on the Carlo Kilkenny border. Well, here in County Clare, another one has just set up because a man has an idea to turn rushes, the bane of farmers' lives, into biochar, which is black gold that can be used as fertilizers on the land. Rushes are plentiful in this part of Ireland. They grow vigorously on wet land and they're not easy to remove. Beef farmer Kieran Dooley has spent his life trying to manage them. So this field is one of about 85 acres that you have. Amazing view of Loch Derg out there. Yes. But as you can see... <laughs> it's full of, full of rushes. Full of rushes. Full of rushes, yeah. The cows don't eat this, do they? No, no. Cows that go hungry before the eat these. Yeah. So they're an obnoxious weed in one way, if you want to look at it that way, like, you know. Like generations of farmers before him, Kieran makes use of the rushes on his farm but he still has far more than he needs. I cut them and bale them and I'd use them for bedding, you know, from when my cows are calving and things like that. On this field alone, this summer, I cut it in strips and I had 81 bales. If I had to cut every inch of it, I'd have 160 bales. Yeah. You know, because I left roughly half for grown. Nobody has a use for that amount of them. It's just too much for you. It's too, too yeah. much. The good news is that these rushes may have a lucrative future because they can be used to make biochar, a form of charcoal made from plants. Research shows that adding biochar to soil, slurry and even animal feed can potentially enhance soil fertility, soak up ammonia and help animal health. Kieran is part of the Irish Biochar Cooperative. Another member, Bernard Carey, is heading up an EU-funded project which is looking at the potential of biochar in Ireland. So Bernard, we're going to turn the wood that you have here and these old rushes yes. into charcoal, biochar. Yes. Just explain the process. Well, the process is we basically heat the, uh, the timber or the rushes in a low oxygen environment at a high temperature, 300, 500 degrees. The technical term is uh, pyrolysis, and you're left with pure carbon. And the secret, as you said, is oxygen. So if you have oxygen and wood, you're going to get flames, yeah. carbon dioxide, and you're going to get ash. Yeah. But we don't want that. No, we don't. Yeah. If you take your traditional stove that most people would have, you actually do have little bits of carbon in your stove probably the following morning. But it's more than likely you have ash because you've burnt everything off. We want to control that oxygen in, the, in that container to end up with charcoal, biochar. The wood and rushes are put into a specially designed kiln. And just explain a little bit about the shape of it. It's like a cone and there's these pipes here as well. Well, the idea is that the air comes up and then swirls around here, hot air, and it, it burns off the gases as they're coming out. So this is a reduced emission sort of method compared to your traditional ring kiln that people might be familiar with in a woodland situation where the smoke comes out and you get a lot of methane off it, whereas in this, the methane will be burnt off. Once lit, more layers of rushes and wood are added over a period of hours. It slowly starves the material underneath of oxygen, creating the biochar. Making biochar is an ancient, low-tech process. But if it's made on a commercial scale, it'll need to be done under controlled conditions. James Minogue is a farmer and ecologist who's long believed in the potential of biochar. If you want to make carbon neutral biochar, your burning method and your, 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 your whole technology you utilise to make it has to minimise any carbon release. At a basic thing you could burn a whole pile of stuff and you could release carbon as well. So on an industrial scale we have to get the techniques really really well so that you're not creating carbon um, you're actually fixing it and then you can bury it or use it in your soil and that, that carbon is fixed for hundreds if not thousands of years then. Biochar has been licensed as an animal feed supplement in some European countries. The Irish Biochar Cooperative would like to see the same thing happening here in Ireland. What we want to do is buy biochar from many small producers producing low carbon footprint char. And then we would take that charcoal, process it in the sense of further drying it and grinding it. That's all we do, bag it. 
and then it could be sold at a reasonable price that we could pay the producers a decent amount and the co-op can keep going. So you're putting water yeah, in? Just the yeah, just Bernard stops the process by adding water from above and below. It's taken four hours, but we finally have biochar. So this is what you end up with. These are the rushes from Kiron's farm. And it looks kind of like black spaghetti, but you can see this is the biochar here. It's extraordinary stuff, pure carbon. And over here is the biochar from the wood that was burned. And the project that Bernard and his friends are doing is to find out then what is the potential with all this. You know, how good is it in slurry? What does it do? How good is it in the stomachs of cows? And what is the potential there? But also how good is it at fertilizing the soils of Ireland? If this pilot project proves to be a success, there's a potential for farmers like Kieron to earn an income from the thing that is currently a nuisance, rushes in their fields. At the end of the day, farmers might be able to make some money off this as yeah, well. Yeah, well, the fact is at the moment, we have to cut the rushes anyway. So you either cut them and leave them there or cut them, bale them and sell them on to Bernard. Yes. You know. Sell them on is the key yeah, word. Yeah, and it is, it's, it's so important. If they can't make money, it's not going to work. I just wonder, predict in 10, 15, 20 years time for me, what kind of, what they call like a biochar economy for farming in the West in particular, would you imagine? We're building a mobile plant that we're going to go to the farms and people would come with the rushes to that. So you would see the uh, sort of potential for lots of smaller yeah. economies related to biochar all yes. around the country? Yeah, and based yeah. on the cooperative thing, bring it back, it was successful for over 100 years. Mm.